Alrighty, so I turned the heat off. They've been sitting for a little over a half an hour, covered. Um, and just to recap, I used the Aspiritus by Nomad. Hold on, and I'll tell you in a sec here. Yeah. See, not prepared. Um, yeah, the Aspiritus is 50% recycled wool, 50% tensile. It's 100 grams. There's 380 yards or 350 meters. In each hank, it's a four-ply fingering sock weight, just so that's clear, like you care to know. But anyway, and what I did was I, I'm using both um, two of my pans and because I wanted to do six. Um, I'm doing sets of two, but this way these guys will, you know, there'll be six, there'll be three sets. And now I'm going to open them up. I soaked the um, hanks in a mixture of citrus, citric acid and water and then drained them, you know, squished them out in, the, in that little bin there and dropped them in here. And this is low immersion. I did not mix anything other than just tapping the edges after I dropped the dye. And this is a dry, dry, you know, dry dop. Or, dry dop? What the heck? Dry drop, I guess you'd say. And this is what they look like. And the colors, if you weren't able to read it, um, are safety orange. I should have prepared that as well. Radioactive, silver gray, and spruce. So yeah, they look pretty cool. I know the lighting is bad because I have this uh, really cool thing that the man built over my, it's over my stove. It looks like an old barn house, but it does affect the lighting. So, but we didn't know I was going to be doing this. So now what I'm going to do is just flip these over and see what they look like on the other side. I do want some white because I want this, you know, this batch to be speckled. I see there's some uh, orange still there. Yeah, some of the orange because I didn't touch it. So some of this dye that I dropped didn't, have some, you know, didn't get wet. It just rested on top. So that's what's falling into the into the pan right now if you're seeing you know the residual the dirty water colored water I guess or whatever you want to call it all right so now it's a matter of you know what I'm I'm thinking that I might just do a squish because I kind of like that side this one's picked up a little bit of the greens so the the color is a little more green but I'm gonna give this a squish so the color is sort of consistent around the whole pot. See, there's a lot more color here, so I'm even going to tilt it. And I'm trying to mix the water so that the water that's in there is, is similar. All right, so let's go to this next one here. See what we got going on. And this is all trial and error, you know. I'm winging it. Unconventional tutorial. I have been watching, um, you know, legit <laughs> indie dyers and just watching their techniques. So I'm picking up some nice uh, proper tips on how to do this. So that was almost, that, that water was almost all clear. So what the water we're seeing is just water that was on top of these hanks. I'm going to do the same in here so it's consistent. All right, they, they look pretty cool. I, I'm hoping that you're agreeing with me. I, I kind of like this a little bit more white on this one than I care for, to see, but let's see if we slide this dirty water over. Well, you know, these two, this hank here and this hank here, the undertone or, or whatever looks more um, equal. So that's okay because I'm putting these in sets of two. So, you know, I'll, I'll after they're dried and all that, I will uh, see which two look the best together, um, the most consistent. So that might be what happens there. So I'm not, I changed my mind. I have that right, I'm a female. I made another executive decision to not add more dye. So what I'm going to do, I, the heat is off at this point, and I'm going to leave it off and see what happens, and just cover the um, cover these pans. And 
let it sit. I'll, I'll find other things to do um, for a little bit. But I'm going to try to let it sit for like about an hour and see what happens. All right, so um, I will see you then. All righty, I waited long enough. I have no patience. Let's, I did turn the heat to an extreme low, you know, almost nothing just because it was, I could have talked so long, but this thing's off that it kind of cooled off a little bit. But yeah, they haven't, oops, sorry about that. Um, they haven't changed much from what we saw uh, half an hour ago. So um, I'm going to take them out. I'm going to rinse them, wash them, and uh, drain them, and then hang them up. Um, what I'll do is I'll show you what they look like wet when I'm done wringing them out. And then they'll, of course, lighten up when they, uh, they um, dry. And they're going to they're gonna lighten up just by rinsing because some of this dye is going to come off, I'm sure, because I didn't probably leave them in long enough. Anyway, uh, I'm still learning, but um, I'm also going to be trying new ones. So keep, keep an eye out for uh, other videos coming up because I did buy some... some uh, medium that I used to use when I used to paint on with acrylic paints. I used to paint on clothing, denim jackets and stuff, leather jackets. And I'm going to mix this with some acrylic uh, paint and then try to dye over perhaps a cotton, an acrylic, and then maybe even a wool just to see if that works. And then, you know, I'm just trying new things out. Also, I found in the basement, uh, we like to call it the dungeon, my cr uh, canning pot um, that I, I never canned. Uh, so I'm going to use that for steaming hangs of yarn and see, we'll try the steaming in that. And then also I have a crock pot that I never use because I don't cook. So I thought, heck, it's been sitting in the cabinet for a lot of years and I'm going to use that and I'll try to crock pot some, some Hanks. So uh, keep an eye out for future uh, crazy, unconventional tutorial dyeing uh, videos. All right, so I'm going to let you go and then, well, hang out because I'll show the film of what these look like when they're kind of wet but washed out. What I forgot to say, if you are dying yourself, um, this is hot, let it cool. Uh, one of the important things that I was unaware of that I did learn and will share with you is that when you, whatever the temperature is of the wool, um, you want to rinse it in equal temperature. So it's good to let it cool on its own. So um, I, and you don't want to go too hot. So it's smart for me to take these off of the burner, put them on my uh, marble counter, and that'll cool them off a little more quickly, keep the lids off and let them naturally cool. And then the room temperature, that's when I'll wash it and, and uh, rinse it out in room temperature water. But that was important. I, I just wanted to share that because I didn't know that. All right, bye again. All righty, here they are. They're still wet. I just took them, I washed them, rinsed them, and I've designated which ones are gonna go together. So these first two that you're seeing, these are the ones that were in the, the sides, which I said I was gonna keep together because they had gotten more dye, and they work, they work perfectly together. Then these two, well, actually these four other ones are real close, but I took the two that were in the same pot and put them together. Let me see if I can, just so you could, like this is white here, but there's colors on the other side. Same here, like this side will be a little bit whiter. I think these will be really pretty. This is gorgeous. Look at how that blue did that. And then there is some speckling in here. Uh, not a heck of a lot because um, if I'm speckling, I usually do it a little bit differently. But but it's like, see, this looks really white here, where you're going to get a nice when you're when you're crocheting or knitting this, you're going to get a nice strip. But on the other side, you've got all that color. And this spruce, it well, let's see here. Let me look. All right, what you're seeing, what I'm seeing on the camera, is this being looking kind of blue and like a dark teal. It really is a, a evergreen. It's a, a spruce color, but aren't they pretty? Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with them. Uh, it's a beautiful, 
sunny, slightly windy day. So this is absolutely perfect. That's why I like to dye my yarns first thing in the morning because I kind of have an idea of what the day is going to look like. And since I, I air dry these, it's, you know, when it, like sometimes I do it and it's raining out and they take a little longer to dry in the house. But yeah, I think they're really pretty. Let's see if I could do a close up. Isn't that pretty? So there's some speckles there. And then you've got some speckles there. And of course, this looks like a lot of white, but you've got colors on the other side. But that's going to look really pretty when you're, you know, crocheting it up. This I love. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Another thing that I usually do, and I'll just bring it up here, is uh, see where there's the ties here? When I'm doing a, like this one here, I dropped the die, but then didn't touch anything. I didn't fiddle with it, Thris. Um, and that's where, where if I'm trying to get a, a, a fuller uh, color, I will, as it's in there, I will move these around and loosen this up so that you don't get that white spot. Because that's, that's a common thing that happens when you're dying, especially certain brands of yarn base, they have those ties kind of tight. I'm not mentioning any names, not throwing any shade, just showing your pretty hanks. Yeah, I think they came out really nice. I'm really happy with them. And uh, yeah, and if you notice, they're kind of fall colors. They're, they're looking, the blue to me on this side is looking, it's looking blue. It is not blue. It is uh, definitely a dark, um, evergreen because I the, the lighter green is the radioactive and then that bluish tint tinge is spruce but it it looks blue on here oh my god can I drag that out any longer but anyway I think they're really pretty I'm going to go hang them outside and maybe dye some more yarn I think today's going to be a dyeing day thank you and uh, be well and uh, see you next time bye bye for now